while ago, I was selected for a position, one that I really wanted, but that I was unqualified for. I was nervous and sick to my stomach. I had no idea what I was going to say when I came face to face with my boss for the first time. Well, the doctor said after 18 hours of labor, your little boss has arrived. <laughs> He is six pounds and 13 ounces with a full head of hair. Don't worry, he's going to teach you everything you need to know. It's all on-the-job training. Have you guys ever heard that saying that having kids means your heart will officially be walking outside of your body? Well, it's true, and mine was. I took one look at this kid, and I knew that my happiness would be forever linked up to his. I was at once in love with him, and also terrified that he was about to figure out that his mom had no idea what she was doing. As if on cue, my son's big brown eyes stared up at me, and I started thinking, can he like telepathically hear every admission of incompetence I'm making? Because he gaped at me, like, woman, please tell me you are not this clueless. Since giving birth to our son, we have had two more daughters, and now I feel like my heart's walking outside my body three times over. So for the past decade, I've been on this mission to see, is there a way for me to maximize the odds that my kids will grow up happy? So I started researching this area of human development and happiness, and I came across this quote from psychologist Uri Bronfenbrenner, and here's the quote. Every child needs at least one adult who's irrationally crazy about them in order to grow up happy. Well, I'm a control freak, so I got this info, and I'm thinking, that's great, because now I have a roadmap, and I have something to dissect. So let's get started. Now, parents, we're admittedly crazy about our kids, but that's not an irrational love. We're hardwired to nurture, care for, and protect our kids. There is nothing irrational about that. If you go up to someone and say, hey, I love my kid, you're not going to get a pat on the back for that. That's expected of you. So where do we find this adult irrational love? Well, all signs seem to be pointing to intergenerational friendships, particularly between kids and older adults. And I do mean friendships, peer-to-peer -peer relationships. I'm not talking about the ones with the power imbalance, with the kid down here and the adult up here. I'm talking about equal footing friendships, because these friendships can improve long-term happiness in both groups. So how does this work? Well, let's break the topic down and start by talking about kids and the challenges that they face today. This generation of kids is the first generation that has no idea what life is like without the internet. They literally hold technology in the palm of their hands, and they have access to tons of social media accounts and people. And yet, the incidence of isolation, loneliness, depression, and anxiety have nearly doubled since the 1980s. And what about school bullies? When I was growing up in the 80s, I was the magnet for school bullies. And I still have the scars to prove it. Not much has changed in the world of bullying. The one big difference, though, is that there is no off button. So this harassment that starts at school, it goes and follows kids online, and it haunts them 24-7. And it leaves a mark on them that is physical, mental, and public. And although a lot of these kids have the most loving family members, sometimes kids have a hard time turning to their immediate family because they feel self-conscious or embarrassed or ashamed. That was me. And at the same time, they don't have the same support system that they used to have. The American Sociological Review states that in the 80s, kids had, on average, around three friends they could count on. Today, that number has fallen from one friend to no one. Now, here are three more facts you need to hear about kids growing up today. Number one, isolation and loneliness start early. Up to 12% of kindergartners and first graders report feeling lonely at school every day. Number two, JAMA Pediatrics tracked over 1,000 children from birth to 26 years old. And what they found is that lonely childhoods can lead to less healthy adulthoods, 
and even shorten lifespans. And finally, number three, the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, came out with a report in 2015 that stated that 20%, to 0%, of teens in this country between the ages of 15 and 19 have considered suicide. These statistics are alarming, and we can't stand back and watch them continue to escalate. We need to let our kids know, hey, you guys matter, you're being heard, and there is a support system out there for you. Now, technology is great, but technology is not going to give us that support system. People have to do that. So where do we find these people with the time, passion, commitment, and skill to engage in friendships that are not just nice to have, but absolutely critical to children's well-being? Well, the answer is actually right in front of us. Every day, over 11,000 Americans are turning 65 years old in this country, and the average life expectancy has increased by 32 years since 1900. These super adults, as we'll call them, <laughs> <laughs> these super adults are the best resource that we have. So why is it that we haven't jumped on this opportunity already? Part of the problem seems to be that a lot of us write off this entire population of super adults, and we slap these ridiculous labels on them, calling them tired or frail or useless. <laughs> Nothing could be further from the truth, you guys. Let's just take a look at a couple of the many, many super adults we know in the public eye. Someone like Betty White, who's 96 years old, and she's one of the country's most popular comedians. Or Tony Bennett, he's 91. He's rocking out with Lady Gaga, He's selling out shows, and he's putting on these amazing performances, many of which do not even start until an hour after I have gone to sleep. <laughs> so if he's considered tired, I just don't know where that leaves me. The point here is that super adults, they're creative, they're kind, they're extremely smart, and best of all, they're good with kids. Just ask a kid, hey, who'd you rather hang out with, your parent or a grandparent? Parents are going to lose that battle every single time. Now, here's the cool thing about this concept of intergenerational friendships. Not only can it benefit kids, but it can benefit super adults just as much. Now, I gave you guys three stats on kids a minute ago. Here's three things you should hear about super adults. Number one, up to 43% of super adults report feeling lonely. Number two, a lonely super adult has a 59% higher risk of physical and cognitive decline compared to their more social counterparts. And finally, number three, a lack of adequate social interaction can increase your chance of premature death by nearly twice as much. So put this another way, our inability or unwillingness to communicate is actually killing us. One of the seniors who I interviewed for my research said to me, do you want to know what the hardest thing is about growing old? The hardest thing is that I have to watch as my world around me dies out, and the people who are left oftentimes don't care about me, and they write me off. By encouraging kids to hang out with super adults and form friendships, we can make sure that that statement is not true for other super adults in the future. Things like loneliness, isolation, depression, and anxiety are common in both generations. So why not have them join forces so they can help each other? Now, this all sounds good on paper, but I did have a question. I thought to myself, well, how is this going to play out in real life? Are these two generations really going to have anything in common? So I did some independent research, and I'm going to share my findings with you. But what I came to realize is that these generations have a lot more in common than I initially thought, and they seem to think on the same wavelength. Now, I'm going to show you some worksheets I gave the kids over the summer, just trying to keep their brains fresh, and you'll see my response in red. <laughs> now, what do you do with that? I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you the same worksheet, same question, same answers, different grader. This time, the grader is a super adult. <laughs> I 
The moral of this story is that I should never write another worksheet ever again. <laughs> now, I wanted to show you what some super adults have been up to online, just to show you that just like the younger generation, they say what's on their mind, and there's nothing wrong with that. So for some of you who might be way in the back, these are from Facebook, and I'll read it to you in case you can't see all the way back there. Mary says to Josephine, Joe, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I'm going to unfriend you from my Facebook because I got 16 posts from you in the last two days. It's too many for me, so I wanted you to know the reason. <laughs> if you guys use Facebook, you'll see that Josephine doesn't really give a beep because she thumbed up this comment, so she was pretty happy about it. <laughs> And the next one is from the Hampshire Police Department. They took to Facebook because they needed to publicize an image of a suspect as an indecent exposure incident. And one of the super adults, though, she had a question, and she said, well, if you want to speak to him, why didn't you speak to him when you took his photo? <laughs> <laughs> So I wanted to show you guys what a marriage of kids and super adults looks like. This next one is from a boy who really loves his older dad, so he wrote him out a nice little card. Sweet. Hey. <laughs> and I have one more for you guys. This kid might just be the next big thing in greeting card executives. I'll let the words do the talking. <laughs> now notice how happy he looks, <laughs> he even framed it. So I saw that picture frame and I said, I'm done with my research. I've seen everything I need to see. I know these generations are going to get along just fine. Now, on a more serious note, um, I've come to terms with the fact that my heart is always going to be walking outside of my body. That's my reality and it's the reality for many of you and I'm going to continue to worry about this loneliness epidemic. But worry is not always a bad thing, because it can motivate us to take action. Now, face-to-face -face friendships are always ideal, but it's not always practical for us to get in the car and drive across town. I get that. So for those of you who happen to be busy, I have an alternative solution for you. And ironically enough, that alternative solution involves the internet. Now, even though the internet has possibly contributed to this growing sense of isolation that many of us feel, it could also hold the key to fixing it. By encouraging kids and super adults to get to know each other online through Skype or Facebook, or even FaceTime, we can encourage these groups to really form some solid friendships. My own kids have been Skyping online with members of a senior living facility, and the results have been awesome. Finding a common bond's never been an issue for them. In fact, it's usually me who has to intervene after half an hour, 45 minutes has gone by, and I'm like, you guys need to get off this call. We have to go somewhere. And I get these looks like disapproving faces, not just from my kids, but from the super adults on the other end of the line. <laughs> but what that tells me is that there's a real friendship there. And that's what my kids have taught me that friendship is ageless if we just allow it to be. A while back, one of the kids was asking me about the scars on my shoulder, wanted to know what happened, and I said, the short story is, um, when I was a kid, I went through a rough patch. I didn't know who to turn to. Well, is that going to happen to me? Am I going to get those same scars? I thought about all the friends that my kids had, their really good grandfather friend from karate, or the entire circle of seniors from the senior center. And I said, to her, I said to her, I said, you know what? I don't think this will happen to you. Because the second you're feeling upset, and the moment you need friends to lean on, you have this whole army of super adults ready and willing to help you. When you guys get together, you're unstoppable. 
Our kids, our hearts that are walking outside of our bodies, they deserve better than what they're getting. They don't deserve to fall prey to these loneliness and suicide statistics any longer. It's time for us to get up and do something about it, especially because there's a feasible solution in sight. And that answer is connecting the two generations. Well, how do you do that? You can start by taking easy steps. Just say hi to your much older or much younger neighbor. And if someone looks like they're in dire need of attention, take two seconds and just say, hey, how are you doing? And if your kid wants to hang out with their 89-year-old neighbor, let them. Human connection is so vital to our happiness that we need to make it a priority to take care of all the relationships we have in our life and go out and forge new ones where they never existed because that's how we're going to leave a mark and that's how we're going to leave a legacy. There's a saying that ending a war is simple if you surrender. I'm asking every single one of you, refuse to surrender for our kids' sake and for our own. Encourage the younger and older generations to connect with one another. Yeah, it might be a little awkward and inconvenient at first. Change usually is. But if we can push ourselves to see intergenerational friendships in a new light, all of us will end up happier as a result. Thank you.